Pray, God, that no weapon formed against his word shall prosper, no distractions. God, anything that would try to rise up against this house, you cast it down in Jesus' name. Any spirit that would try to rise up and steal the thoughts and minds of your people, God, we cast it down in Jesus' name. Every stronghold that would try to come against your people, we cast it down in Jesus' name. And today, God, we plead the blood over every person watching on Facebook Live and here in the auditorium. We plead the blood of Jesus, and we ask that God, your anointing will cover everything that is done today. Let nothing come out of my mouth, not be blessed of your spirit. God, today, have, may we have ears to hear, and may we have hearts to receive your word this morning. And we thank you in advance for what you will accomplish through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's get into this thing this morning. I tell you, I'm excited to see Nathaniel and Shirley back in the country. They've been traveling. It's good to have them. Don't they look good, y'all? Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Hallelujah. Don't they look good? Oh, hallelujah. Good to have your home. Amen. Good to have your home. God is so good, and I know it's, it's, it's a Labor Day weekend. Now, my executive pastor and his wife, Raymond Bible College, had a big gathering, so that's what Daniel and Lita had. They have a big gathering with all the Raymond students from around the world. They're having a great time, so we pray that they make it back safely. Amen. But this morning, I have a sermon this morning that God gave me. It's, it's called Change is Necessary. Amen. How many of you know change is hope? Change is hope. I don't know about you, but I'm a preacher of habits. I have my habits, amen. And I have the way I got things set up, and I love the way I do my little, my little daily routine, amen. And when you mess with that, you mess with me, amen. Because I like my little, and I, I, I be a, there's some habits, amen. Anybody got habits? We all got habits, amen. But we don't talk about that this morning, but this. But, but let's, let's really grow in this word this morning. Change is necessary. And we'll get into it, but I want you to understand that change is really necessary in order for us to overcome. We talked about last week, you are an overcomer. Yeah, you have overcame by the blood of the Lamb. But for me to overcome, I have to learn to change. Amen. I couldn't stay the same. I couldn't be the same person. I can't always uh, do it the way I think it should be done. Sometimes God has to come and change me so I can be a better person. Amen? Amen. Change is necessary. So this morning as I get into this, I, I don't want you to look at it from a, from a physical standpoint. I don't want you to look at it from a personal standpoint. I want you to look at it from a spiritual aspect this morning. How do I need to change spiritually? Amen? Because that's some things we're doing that's keeping us from growing in the Lord. Amen? And I want you to grow. Listen, I was honest last week. I really see some of you in this church have grown over the past eight months. I watch y'all grow. I've seen you grow. I, I am so proud of you. I've seen some of you that when you walked in the door, you was a hot mess. I mean, you must you was a hot mess. I mean, I saw some of you walk in the door with so much fear in your life. But now you've got God in your life, and I'm seeing the change in you, and it's beautiful. But you know what? When we get so far gone, that's when the devil comes to what? Trip us up. And I don't want you to be tripped up by the devil because of a lack of knowledge. Amen. Because of a lack of knowledge, my people perish. And I don't want you to, to get so out there and all of a sudden lose your testimony. Amen. I want you to hold on to that testimony because Jesus is coming back, and he's coming back soon. And I want you to be ready for his return. Because when he comes, I want you to be ready for the return of the Lord. Amen? Amen? So this morning, let's get into this thing. Change is necessary. Amen? Slide number one. What will change look like? Think about it. When you start talking about change, what will change look like? All right? Now, let, let's, let's look at change uh, from a physical standpoint. All right? Now, now, now change, uh, when it comes, you, you got to prepare for change, right? You got to know what change looks like. Now, now, Toy, she she works people out. She got some of uh, her gym people here. And, and, I, and I told her, I, said, I feel sorry for y'all. Because she's she probably rough on you, man. You know, you think lace rough on you. Toy 
all up on it. Give me one more. Give me. I ain't got no one to give, but you want one more. And I, but think about change. Anybody ever really uh, lost a lot of weight in your physical appearance change? You 
kingdom or never enter the kingdom of heaven. But let me put a bookmark right here. My first point is this. The Lord does not change. We have to change. The Lord does not change, so we, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Because if God changed, we would be destroyed. Amen. So listen, let, let me give you my first scripture and we found in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6 through 9. And then this is about breaking the covenant by withholding the tithe. But I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about change. See, the Lord don't change. He sets up covenants. Amen. He sets up his ordinances, right? He sets up his precepts, right? He sets his commands, right? And the Lord sets his will, don't he? And the Lord said, he said, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Verse 6, he says, I, the Lord, don't change. See, see the Lord never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we're thankful for that. He's the same God he was back in the beginning of time. He's the same God that said, there's anyone you can use. Father, use me. Send me down to be that sacrificial lamb. Amen. And when he was sacrificed for you and I, he never changed. Amen. He said, he said, everybody said, ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord. Today, the biggest change you can make is turning your life back to Jesus. Can I get it? That's the biggest change you can make today. Amen. I don't care how powerful you think you are. He's the most powerful spirit Amen. in the world. Amen. That's none stronger, bigger, better, or better than Jesus. Amen. And today, some of us need to return back to God because we're so busy being out there trying to prove something to man when man can't save your soul. That's a mouthful right there. Man can't save your soul. Your titles can't save your soul. Your bank account can't save your soul. Amen. Your relationships can't save your soul. Only Jesus can save your soul. Can I get it? Hallelujah. See, see, I want us to grow this morning, man. Because if we grow in the word, then guess what? No weapon formed against me shall. Hallelujah. Look what he said. He said, but you ask, how are we to return? Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offering. You are under a curse. Your whole nation. And that word nation means family. Your whole family is under a curse because you are robbing me. So my first point is, we need to change, but God never changes. And we ought to be thankful that he don't change. Can I get it? Yeah. Next point I want to make, in order to overcome the dysfunction and the insanity in our lives, we must change. Let me park right there for just a minute. Dysfunction. In order for us to overcome the dysfunction in our lives, anybody, well, Now listen, I'm not throwing stones because I live in a glass house. Amen? I live in a glass house, Abraham, so I don't throw stones. Amen? But, but, but in order for us to overcome dysfunction, we need to change. When you say that word dysfunction, what was dysfunction to you? Something that's not normal. Something that's not normal. Dysfunction. Come on. The way we treat each other at the house. Sometimes that can be very dysfunctional. The way we talk to each other at the house, that can be very dysfunctional. Amen. The way we handle our children can be very dysfunctional. Amen. You know, some parents got favorite children, and you favor one over the other one. And you give one more to one than you give to the other one. Amen. You collar one and you, and you kick the other one. Come on now. Dysfunction. Now, I don't do that. put baby girl above my two boys. I don't give baby girl everything she asks for. I don't tell her mama 
comfortable in our habits. We get comfortable. I know some people are comfortable in their dysfunction. They're happy with it. They enjoy the dysfunction because it keeps everybody off balance and they can continue taking advantage. That's what it's meant for. That's what, that's, that's what it does. If, if dysfunction can keep you off balance, listen, an abused wife is always involved in dysfunction. She's always off balance. She's never able to grasp herself and that's how she's able to continue to be abused. That's all I'm telling you guys. But if I want to overcome this thing, I got to change. I got to face my giant. This is how I fight my battles. I got to face that giant. You think they didn't want to fight the lot? It was necessary to fight the lot because he had defiled the king of kings. He had came against the God of Israel. And when things come against me, I don't care who you are, what you are, what your name is. If it's not a God, I'm going to come against you. I'm not coming to get you to destroy you. I'm coming to get you to make sure there's going to be peace. Because I'm a peacemaker. I'm a, I'm a Christian. Amen. 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 God didn't come to destroy. He came to bring peace to this earth. He didn't come to destroy the world. He came to bring peace and bring order into this world. That's why he came and died on the cross. Not to destroy. He said, I didn't come to destroy the world, but I came to bring peace. So when things come against me, I'm going to listen. I don't mind having a good, healthy fight. When I say healthy, sometimes there's a time for peace and there's a time for war. Yeah. Amen. There's a time to rest. There's a time to work. You can't lay around all day. Somebody got to go get something done around it. Somebody got to go fix the beds around it. Somebody got to go clean the bathroom. Somebody got to wash the dishes around it. Somebody got to cook dinner around it because I'm hungry. Yeah. Amen. Got to work in. Everybody can't lay around and do nothing because then the house is going to be nasty. See, 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 if you want to deal with the insanity, you got to deal with the change. And change don't start with them. Change starts within yourself. If I'm not willing to change, John, I can't change John. Amen. Don't come throw in my, uh, come throw, throw stones in my house when you live in the grass house. Amen. She, she was trying to help me this morning. He said, in order to, to overcome the dysfunction and the insanity in our house, in our life, we must change. And I, I want to, to hammer down on that because a lot of us, we, we don't think it's us. Okay. It's not me. I'm the good one, says the king of that was going to come out like that. <laughs> Sometimes I got to remind her, hey, husband, pastor, your love of your life. I'm not that old scoundrel. I'm not that old dog. Amen. I'm not that old nothing. Husband here, man you love, your, your, your baby daddy. Hello? Tone that down, girl. Because sometimes you got to remind the others that, wait a minute, if you don't start throwing stones like that, take a look at yourself. And when we have a reasonable, mature conversation about it, then we both realize both of us need some change. Amen. See, change, change is what? Necessary. Let me, let me give you another scripture this morning. See, see, it, 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 let me go back to this one. Ephesians chapter 4. Everybody turn to Ephesians. I want you to get this. Everybody turn to Ephesians. Get your, get your phones out. Get your Bibles out. Come on, get your phones, get your Bible. Go to Ephesians. Come on, give me time to get to it. When you get that, say amen. Come on, try to get this in the word this morning. See, see, he says, then you will be no longer immature. You know that's some immature people. That's wrong. Yeah, I've met some grown, immature people. Don't do that. I saw some of y'all. <laughs> yeah, I've met some grown, immature people. He said, he said, then you will no longer be immature like children. I know some spiritual children that's grown. And it, it's time to stop that mess. 
It's time to shut your mouth. You ain't got nothing good to say. Shut your mouth. You ain't going to build somebody up. Keep your mouth shut. If you ain't going to glorify God, keep it to yourself. Amen. Spiritual immature. All you want to be heard, but you ain't got nothing good to say. Amen. That's what he said. He said, we won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of every new teaching. You get a little word and you, you hear a little new teaching uh, or you heard somebody put a little put a little prophetic word, you want to run around like that. You did something. Grow in it. Mature in it. Let that thing marinate for a little while. Amen. When I cook my steaks, I let my steaks marinate before I put them on the grill. Because if you put them on the grill, grill prematurely, you ain't going to get the flame up. You're going to burn your meat. That's all that that's going to do. It's going to have to burn your meat. You know how you cook chicken slow, right? Yeah. If you put marinade on chicken too early, what's going to happen to the chicken on the outside? But what the inside going to be what? Uncooked. All right, now let's, 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 this is the point I want to make. If I'm going to change, and change is necessary, it's going to be a change to mature me. Not just to make me feel good. Not just to boost me up. Not just so people can say, Come on, that. That don't do you no good. That don't do the world no good around you. Amen. So if I'm going to change, it's going to mature me. Amen. It's going to help me grow. And that way I won't be tossed to and fro by every new teaching or every new doctrine that comes my way. Because some of that stuff, look, Satan comes as light. What does Satan, he comes as a sheep. Amen. But he ain't no light that to the dark. He got a sheep, he a wolf. Yeah. Amen. And what does a wolf want to do? He want to get in the pack to find the weak one so he can speak to him. No, you know, you ever see people go through your church and they try to find the weak one in the church? If they go through the church, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She, she too smart. She, she know the word, so I ain't going to fool her. I'm going to move past her. No, 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 no. He, 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 he a spiritual man of God. He, he's strong. I ain't a fool with him. But the holy hell, I got that one right there. She's weak. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to whisper in her ear. I'm going to try to create dissension. I'm, I'm going to try to create, create division. And what, you know what that is? You know, that's a Jezebel spirit. It's a power struggle. Ain't nobody fighting for power around here. God is still on the throne. This is God's house. Ain't nobody bigger than God. Ain't nobody smarter than God. Ain't nobody slicker than God. Ain't nobody better than God. Ain't nobody stronger than God. And if God be for me, then who or what can be against me? So if God be for you, who or what can be against you when you are fortified, when you are strengthened, and you got the word as a last one to your feet, he's guiding you, he's leading you, he's protecting you. Now, no weapon formed against you. You're going to try. You're going to say. You're going to try to do. But if God be on my side. And that's how you got to live, saints. You are women and men of God. Your children falls under your protection. You know what? Abraham, as much as he travels, God still protects his Amen. He don't have to physically be in his house for God to protect his home. Because he's praying a blessing over his wife, which transcends over her children. Amen. And when it touches the children, it manifests into the surroundings. So she ain't got to worry about his child being a loose child out there being grabbed by the world or being taunted by the world or, or being influenced by the world because his covering starts with his relationship with God. And when he finds that there's, there's a glitch, you make him just Because nobody's perfect. None of us perfect. We all go through ups and amen. We go through highs and we go through lows. None of us perfect. Then every one we would need Jesus. And that's why we need change. Change is necessary because sometimes we, we, we overblow it. 
We got too much on us. And God said, you carry too much. It's going to destroy you. You better make a change. You better make an adjustment. And see, change for some of us is not a big, horrendous thing. Sometimes it's just tweaking it. Sometimes it's just tweaking it. Just a little bit, make it a little bit more, a little bit more smooth. Amen. Look, this is what I want to finish that scripture. Because what it said is it's, it's powerful. Ephesians 4, y'all still there? Look what he said. He said, he says, we will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever that sounds like the truth. You ever had the man tell you something so good you don't want to believe it? But scripture just said, the king of the said, he said, he said, we will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever. So clever, they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of the church. See, see, when you when, you, when you got God on the inside, and that thing tried to try to, to to trick you or lie to you, your spirit said. I ain't falling for that. Mm -mm. Yeah, we cool, but where you coming from ain't of God. Yeah, 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 you all right, but where you coming from ain't of God. And if it's not of God, then guess what? It's not true. And truth will always set you free. But the lie and the slick scheme will always put you in bondage. Amen. That's why change is necessary. See, see, listen. See, I have to change my friends from time to time. Now, I ain't talking about real friends. I'm talking about associations. Mm -hmm. Associations. That some friends are for life. Amen. They, they, they're there for life. Amen. For good or bad. Amen. I'm talking about we, we ride or die. But there are some people you associate with for, for, for a minute. Amen. For a while. Everybody in it be your life there. Amen. Everybody ain't meant to be there always. That season's about to talk about. It. And that's change. And sometimes we don't want to let them go. And God said, you better let them jump and jump. Because they're about to walk in something you ain't prepared for. And it could be good or bad. Amen. Because if I'm walking with giants and you ain't prepared to walk with giants or walk among giants, you're going to get destroyed. So you better know your anointing and you better know your level of, of spiritual uh, of growth. Because if you put yourself in the field that you have, yeah, but everybody ever been stone skiing. All right, we go stone skiing, right? So that, that's the, that's the, the beginner slopes for the rookies, for the new ones. That's the intermediate slopes for people who've been there a time or two, but they can ski all right. But then, then there's, 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 there's the, the experts. But mm -hmm. right, right, people like me go ski. Amen. Uh -huh. hey, because I'm an expert skier. Uh -oh. I've been skiing for 25 years. So I can get on. I don't ski on the funny slope. I don't ski on the intermediate slope. I go by the expert ski. I drop, boy, I just drop, and man, you better hold on. <laughs> Amen. If you get out there, you don't know what you're doing. You'll get hurt. You'll break a leg. You'll break a hip. Amen. You'll break an arm. Or you might not survive the fall. The point I'm making is that some spiritual warfare that you ain't ready for. Yeah, you're spiritual. You know the word of God. And you've been, you, you been in the kingdom for a little while, but that's some spiritual battles you ain't ready for. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Well, who are you? You ever met yourself with Joker? True story, y'all. I know I would tell them stories. <laughs> I'm over here one time. I'm growing in the word. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a young youth pastor, you know, and I'm preaching and I'm, I'm doing some spiritual things, but I didn't know that was a different level than God. I didn't know y'all I was spiritually ignorant. Amen. So my I went messing with some things I had no business messing with. Some powerful deeds. Shooting up dope, they were doing all kind of 
other stuff and I was young youth pastor and we went to that house to get the man to come with me get my kid and I mean we had a Sunday night service and before Sunday night come on let's go get my kid so we walked in that house man and I felt that thing of course I could feel it and it was it was, it was a bad spirit and he looking at me like I'm a spiritual child I'm looking at him like you the daddy that's your children <laughs> if that ain't my kid I'll be here for moral support Spiritual God, but dude, you, that's your children in there. I've been here to back up, you know what I'm saying? So, so we walked in there, and them things, and the little girl, remember I told her, too? she was hissing like a, like a demon. And, I, and then, little young boy, he was a nerd. He was a nerd, y'all. He had no business with the kids. He was a little nerd, but he was accepted by these people, so he thought, hmm. Man, we walked in that place, and we could feel the spiritual. That little girl was like, ah. <laughs> I thought better go. And that thing was speaking at us, man. And I'm like, dude, that's your son. You better get it. You better get it. You snatch him up. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Because that's my child. I ain't going to let these juniors come here. Boy, let's go. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? That's what I would do. That's what I would have did. But, you know what I'm talking about? He went there. Come on. This kid ain't your child. I'm talking about this kid went no more than 15 years old. So, Steve, you know me and you. Boy, he was just a girl. You know what I'm saying? That was my mama's old daddy was dead. My dad was snatched me by the hat. Yeah. He me up by the hat. You understand? But he was just. And this kid looking at him like dad and him was just, what are they doing? Go get your son. He said, no, Pastor, you go. No, that's your kid. We argue with each other. I mean, we really argue with each other. Dude, that's your kid. He said, you go in there and get him. I said, dude, that's your son, not mine. So I think, oh, okay, I'm going to go in there. So we walk in there, I grab the kid by the hand. Slick, y'all. Yeah. That thing is slick. 
and it's cunning, and it's smooth, smooth out your back. That thing so smooth, it'll slide up on you. That thing will grab hold of you, and you sit there. And then all of a sudden, that thing will grab you, and it'll have you back in the world. All it takes is one drink to make an alcoholic an alcoholic. Amen. All it takes is one puff, one hit, one spike in your arm, one. All it takes is one. And you're right back where you were. And you lost your whole. So if you want to overcome the dysfunction, and you want to overcome the insanity, you must change. Can I get it? My last point. Come on. There is no shortcut to spiritual growth. I tried every shortcut to it. Ain't it ain't no magic formula. You got to pray through. What I mean by praying through, you know what I mean. Yeah. Amen. You finish when you finish. Amen. 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 You got to, there ain't no spiritual shortcuts to spiritual growth. There ain't no shortcut to spiritual growth. You got to pray until you hear from God. And you ain't been set free till that thing has let you. And you know when it let you go. Come on now. You know when that thing has let you go. You can hide it. You can put makeup on it. Come on, you can cover it up, but you know it's still there. And until it's gone, it's still in the house. And until that thing is broken, I'm talking about the back is broken. It ain't dead. And I'm telling you, there's no shortcuts. You got to pray. You got to cry out. You got to call on his name. You got to stay there until it's broken. And you know, and only you know, when you broke the back of the enemy. And when that taste is gone, it's gone. When that feeling is gone, it's gone. When that when I tell you something, man, I have to struggle sometimes. I have to fight sometimes. I have to laugh sometimes. I have to do like this. I ain't let you go till you bless me. Woo! Sometimes I gotta grab hold of God. I say, God, I ain't let you go till you bless me. Not wrestle with God till He bless me. Until he released me from that burden. Until he cleansed me from that sin. Until he washed me while in the snow. And when I'm set free, I know I'm free. Now I've got the power of God in me. And greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. How do you overcome? Because the spirit that's in me is greater than the one that's in the world. That's how I know I've overcame. Because now I've got his spirit. And that thing no longer bothers me. It no longer messes with me. It won't even come around me. Amen. Because they know what I'm going to do. I'm going to break the back. Okay. Let me give you a scripture for that. Hallelujah. Woo! I'm almost done. Hang in there. Hang in there. Hang in there. Second Peter. Second Peter. Second Peter. Second Peter. I'm telling you, verse uh, chapter 3, verse 17. Is, he says, you therefore beloved. Everybody say beloved. That's who I am. I'm his beloved. You are his beloved. Now, now, let me stop right there. When he calls me his beloved, it's not because of what I used to do. Because that's been forgiven. He don't call me his beloved because of what I did. Because that's been forgiven. He don't call me beloved because of, of anything other than the fact that I called on the name of I repented of my, and I believe that he is the Christ. Amen. Now I'm his being love. Amen. See, it don't matter what you say I am, it's what he say I am. He says I'm his beloved. Now listen to what he said. He said, he said, he said, you therefore beloved, since you know this beforehand, be aware, lest you also fall in your own steadfast. Don't get so heavenly minded. Don't get so spiritually minded. Come on now. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Look what verse 18 says. He said, he said, well, let me say, he said, you will lose your own self, be led away with the error of the wicked. Don't let that get in your head. Don't let it mess with your head. 
rebuke that thing in the name of Jesus. He says, he says, but grow in the grace and knowledge. How can you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, glad you asked. He says, he says, to him be the glory, both now and forever. Amen. Let me give you something, I'll let you go. You gotta change your habit. Give me slide number two. What would change look like? You know what change is gonna look like, because you know the change you wanna make, but you gotta change your habits. Can I get it? Yeah. You see, my, my goal is to equip you with the skills you need to begin these new habits. Amen? Can I help you this morning? Number one. Everybody say number one. In order to grow, we need to eat, right? But you got to eat the Bible. You want to grow spiritually, you need the Bible. You got to eat 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 the Bible. Every day you got to digest that word. Every day you got to eat a little bit more of that word. Every day you got to eat the word. You got to eat the word. You got to eat the word. Number two, in order to grow, we need to breathe. Amen. You can't, can't grow if you ain't breathing, right? That's your prayer time. That's your prayer time. You got to pray. You need the Bible and you got to pray. Can I get it? Amen. You need to pray and you need the Bible. Come on now. And listen, listen, listen. In order to grow, we need to clean. Say amen. How do you clean? You got to confess your sins. Confession. Amen. Every day you got to confess your sins. Pastor, I don't have no sins to confess. Liar. Tip the bed and want to 
this, woo, say this saint that we didn't mean it. I know mama, they all get on your nerves from time to time. I know you, I, I know you love them, but they work your last day sometimes. And I know sometimes, you, you, you want to get, 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 I know sometimes you want to, you want to get a hook and cut it. You want to put it on But the Lord, the, the Jesus inside of you says, you know what? I'm going to let that slide. I'm going to let that slide. Come on, think about it. I know y'all been out of the country for a while. I know how he can act sometimes. And I know a few times you brought him somewhere, you said, now, the thank you. We're about to go over here. <laughs> and you try to warn him, but when you get that, he still be the thank you. And you want to reach out and just, yeah. But that's everybody. My wife, y'all, uh, people, my told y'all, sometimes it's just about DNA. <laughs> Amen. I'm flesh. And all flesh is born into sin. And it's part of my yeah. DNA. <laughs> now y'all get what I'm saying? So that thing gonna rise up in every one of us. Because we were all born into. And we all need protection from temptation. And we all need, in order to grow, we need to give. Amen. How do you give? It's not just money, man. I give my time. Amen. To the service of the king. Friday morning. To get up to go to a middle school. That's giving my time. And I go there and I preach the, the word of God and I leave there. And I'm talking about when you preach at 8 o'clock in the morning with the kind of energy that I got to give up, it wears me down. So by 9.30, I'm, I'm with it. Amen. What a cup of coffee. Amen. Amen. I ain't going to tell you all my other secrets. <laughs> we all got habits. But I'm trying to break them habits. Amen. And when you break those habits, you grow. You change. And you change for the good. Amen. And when God sees that change in you, you know what he said? That daughter I can use. That son I can use. God says, anyone that, I, that, that you can use, use me. Anybody willing to change this morning? Come on. Who, who knows you need to change this morning? Who knows? Come on. You know you need some change in your life. Raise your hand. Come on. I want to see you. All right. Now, if you raise your hand, stand on your feet. Come on. Come on. Stay. Come on, Lord. Take your feet. Now listen, 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 listen. Get that table for me. I need some help. They, uh, they got it. Bring that table to the front. We're gonna, we're gonna do communion. All right? We're gonna do communion. Now, now I'm gonna tell you what communion does. It reminds us that Jesus died on the cross for us. It reminds us that not only did he die for us, he rose again. Amen. And he says, you do this as often in remembrance of what I did for you. So if he, listen, he left heaven to come to earth. He came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth. From the grave to the sky. Hold on, hold on. Don't move that Sing it. Amen. All right. Mike, could you come help me, please? Teresa, come in, Mike. Nikita, come in. I need you to come in. Listen. Teresa and Mike to come with Nikita and I. We've been friends a long time. We've had we've dated together. We had our children together. We've grown old together. And we're still loving God together. Amen. But haven't we had to change? Did we change? Our relationship changed over the years. And we still change. 
but we never lost the love for Jesus and the love for each other. The reason why I'm, I'm showing you this is because it's real. There were times when I was hurting, he had to help me through my change. There were times he was hurting, I had to help him through his change. The times she was hurting, the kid had to help her through her change. The times the kid was hurting, the kid, uh, Teresa had to help the kid through her change. We need a caring church family. We need people we can trust and depend on. We got all